9.03 a.m. Any, uh, they get a motion to adopt the agenda. Councillor Gamana, all in favor? That is carried. Uh, I guess before I go into the decision, I just want to uh, let everyone know that's online. I know we did have some requests for uh, the public to speak, um, but you know I've received over 300 emails, phone calls, text messages, and I think uh, through that, uh, we've had a pretty ample opportunity for the uh, public to share their opinions, and I didn't suspect that any new information would come to light af after all those uh, uh, points of contact. So um, it will just be council and administration having the conversation. And with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Osmond, our CAO, to talk about 3.1, which is the restrictions exemption program and carry over from last Wednesday. Thank you very much, council. Uh, so since we met last week to discuss this issue, uh, administration has been working hard to get all the clarifications we needed about the provincial health restrictions and the restriction exemption program. Uh, it has been a difficult process. Uh, there were several uh, changes uh, in interpretation from the province of Alberta uh, during that time. Uh, it is also not uh, consistent across all levels of the provincial government, exactly where the understanding lies. Uh, however, uh, after uh, consulting uh, with our legal counsel, uh, consulting with AHS, um, we believe that we have a solid understanding now of where the restrictions lie. Uh, on Friday, uh, there was a restatement of the provincial health restrictions and a set of guidelines released uh, for the restriction exemption program uh, that was uh, essential to our understanding uh, of the position that we now find ourselves in. Uh, so the clarification uh, that we now have uh, that makes a significant difference uh, to the town of Drayton Valley is that uh, although a facility that provides uh, recreation uh, sport uh, uh, and other uh, social gatherings uh, is required to abide by the provincial health restrictions that include one third capacity restrictions, masking, social distancing. Uh, there is an option within the provincial health regulations to implement a restriction exemption program. The restriction exemption uh, allows for a facility uh, or a group uh, who is uh, booking that facility to implement a restriction exemption program uh, that would allow them to uh, operate without the provincial health restrictions for uh, capacity um, and social distancing. The principal uh, element of the restriction exemption program is a need uh, to verify vaccination of the participating adults. Uh, it is now clear uh, the province has has clarified for the for all municipalities and other facility owners that there is an option for groups uh, to administer their own recreation exemption program. Uh, so if we use the example of uh, an adult hockey group, um, the province uh, regulation is that that adult sport activity can't continue. Uh, if the facility owner, uh, in this case, the municipality or the group, the hockey team, elects to implement a restriction exemption program, they would then have uh, the ability uh, to continue on with their sport. Um, so that, uh, that information I think was critical to our understanding. There would be a requirement uh, for any group choosing to do that uh, to sign an indemnity agreement with the town, basically an understanding that the team is responsible uh, for administration of the uh, restriction exemption program uh, and uh, that uh, they are then responsible to the province. The municipality would have no responsibility to administer monitor or enforce that program that would reside with the province. In terms of our facilities, um, 
starting with the Omniplex. Uh, we, esti we estimated the number of individuals who would be impacted by the provincial restrictions uh, without an REP, either by the municipality or by the group. Uh, we estimate that uh, there are approximately uh, just over 300 uh, adult participants in recreational hockey, curling, and fitness, cl fitness classes at the Omniplex, uh, but those groups would have the option of uh, administering a group-based REP if there wasn't one implemented by the municipality. With regard to uh, public skating, uh, the provincial health restrictions would have the facility uh, capacity limited to 52 participants. Children under the age of 18 uh, could participate without masks. Adults could participate, but would uh, be required to mask, uh, including while they were on the ice during the activity. If there was a restriction exemption program, and because of the nature of public skating, that would need to be a municipal one, the, there would, the main difference would be that there would be no capacity limitation on the facility. Vaccinated adults would be allowed to participate, but masking would still be required. At the pool, uh, we estimated uh, the number of impact uh, in um, aqua pump, gentle aqua and swim lessons to be approximately 110. Um, again, uh, there would be a, a way for us to facilitate uh, an informal group uh, participating in those activities um, to administer an REP if there wasn't one implemented by the municipality. With regard to swimming, similar to public skating, uh, the provincial health restrictions uh, limit the building capacity to 55 participants. Masks would need to be worn to the pool deck. Children under the age of 18 and adults could participate. Uh, two meter distancing between non-family members uh, would still need to be maintained. For the risk, if there was a restriction exemption program, again, given the nature of the activity, uh, that would be a municipal restriction exemption program. It would remove the capacity limitation. Um, uh, it would allow um, vaccinated adults to participate and masking would still be required to the pool deck. Uh, with regard to the fitness center, uh, the fitness center, um, operating under the one third capacity uh, has approximately um, a 35 uh, in terms of their operations when they're set up under the third capacity has approximately a capacity of 35. Uh, in speaking with the administrators of that facility, uh, that number is um, higher than their average participation at the center. And so they don't anticipate having an issue there. Um, again, the, the same situation with regard to adult group classes um, without a municipal REP, they would be required uh, to form some sort of informal group that would allow them to administer an REP. Uh, included in the package today, I did include uh, the full text um, of the guidelines regarding restriction exemption programs from the province. That information was updated last Friday, as well as the new uh, health order from the chief medical officer. Uh, this is order number 45. Um, it updates 44. Uh, it was also brought into effect on Friday uh, and is the primary document that led to our um, the current position we were in, uh, which, as I mentioned before, is significantly different than the position uh, that the province had outlined for us last week. Uh, so uh, the other documents that were included in the package uh, were a couple of letters that were provided through administration uh, with requests that they be forwarded to council. I know that council has received a large number of correspondence uh, that did not flow through um, administration. Um, that is the, the sum total of the information that I've prepared for council. Um, I think uh, 
the the other important pieces to understand is that uh, there will be a capacity uh, following the provincial health restrictions. Um, we would need to create space to be able to maintain distancing, but there would be no issue with adults um, assisting their children participate uh, in youth sport, so skate tying for minor hockey, those types of things. Uh, and again, abiding by all the health restrictions, uh, we would be able to have uh, parents watch from the from the stands. Uh, it would require masking, it would require uh, social distancing and capacity restrictions, but it, there would be no requirement um, for a restriction exemption program to verify vaccination status. Um, if there are any further questions, I'd be happy to assist council. I have a number of uh, members of administration uh, from the facilities that are most impacted. Um, that we are looking today uh, for some direction from council on where council would like to see us go with regard to a decision between provincial health restrictions uh, or the potential of REP programs uh, administered municipally. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Osmond. Uh, open up for questions. I have Councillor Dawson and Councillor Gamano. Good morning. Thank you for that. And thank you to administration for gathering all the numbers and the information for us over this last week. Um, I know that um, the the information has changed a lot over the week coming from the province. So it's nice to to hear that it looks like, you know, there's an option here that could fit our community, that there's one that um, that we're able to still run the program, still possibly do the one third capacity and and still give that um, opportunity for everybody. So so I'm glad to see that. I did have one question and that's in regards to um, the swimming pool and the masking required on the pool deck. Um, I, I'd just like some clarity on that because to me that just doesn't sound right. But if I could get some clarity, please. <laughs> Uh, yes, I do have uh, Lee from the pool, uh, and I'll ask that uh, she respond to that question. Lee? Lee is, is no longer on the call. I'll maybe ask that to Nat uh, try to answer that for us. Thank you, Councillor Dodds. Uh, the pool requirements, uh, of course, do require masking um, anywhere within the viewing area as well as the um, right along the deck um, and the patrons so far have been very compliant with uh, the regulations. What they do is they mask. There's a little baggie that they bring. Uh, they've been bringing their own. The pool has its own. And uh, just before right where they enter the water, they place their mask in uh, the baggie until they come out of the pool, out of the activity. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, thank you very much for you know, bringing all this information. Um, I'm sure, you know, it has been a very fluid situation and information is changing all the time. Uh, you know, I really appreciate uh, the, the work that administration has done. Um, just, you know, from the, uh, the um, information that you've given us today and even the discussions that we had uh, prior to this, uh, I believe I was coming uh, from an angle where, you know, how can we accommodate as many community members as possible uh, and I believe that's the the uh, vision, or that's the the way that we were discussing as a whole council as well. Um, just wondering, uh, you know, when you presented the information, uh, you were, I believe, kind of recommending that we will be working with uh, you know each individual groups uh, to create this rep program, because that's if if the uh, the town facilities are not creating the rep program, we have to. Uh, these groups have to create the rep program in order to operate, right? So, and that's the way that we can um, maximize the, the use of our facilities for the time being. And it, again, this is a fluid situation. It could change next week, you know, week after this, this could all, all change. So um, is that the recommendation that uh, administration providing us? Also, have you had any conversation with these groups already? Thank you. Uh, to Councillor Gamana through the chair. Uh, thank you very much for the question. I, I know that uh, all of our facility managers have been gathering information throughout the, the past couple of weeks um, and have uh, been interacting closely with the groups and patrons to help understand. Uh, with regard to my recommendation, 
uh, at this point under the set of rules uh, that the province has outlined for us and our understanding today, uh, it would be my recommendation uh, that council uh, consider allowing groups to administer their own REP programs. Uh, that allows them to access uh, sport options uh, that would be otherwise un inaccessible. Uh, I do not believe uh, that there is an advantage to having those REP programs managed through the municipality. Uh, it increases um, the amount of interaction on a, on a difficult issue that our staff would have to have with the public. Um, there is an option for uh, the individual groups to get buy-in inside the group and administer them themselves. I think that's a much easier way to get buy-in for those programs. Um, and so with that option on the table today, uh, it would be my recommendation that council consider that course of action. Councillor Ballas, do you have a question or a statement? I have a motion. Oh. <laughs> so based on the information that's been provided and uh, previous conversations, I'm prepared to make a motion, which uh, of course can be debated. Uh, before I make the motion though, I'm also want to get some advice from administration in regards to uh, removing the restriction that we've placed on the uh, MCC and total fitness. Uh, do we need to look at two separate motions? Uh, to Councillor Ballas through the chair, I believe that uh, a single motion uh, cancelling uh, REPs for those two facilities uh, and providing a further direction to administration would be appropriate. I believe it can be done in one. Thank you. I move that council cancel the restriction restriction exemption program at the McKinsey Center and total fitness effective Wednesday, September 29th, 2021, and that administration adjusts facility operations to meet the current provincial health restrictions as implemented by Alberta Health Services, and that council direct administration to operate the Omniplex and Park Valley Pool as per the current provincial health restrictions as implemented by Alberta Health Services. All right, Councillor Peoples. Just a quick question, uh, just with how it was worded, that motion, then do I have to leave? Because there was direct mention of something that I am a direct competitor of. So am I in pecuniary interest or am I okay? Because the overall motion is to rescind the program as a whole is what it sounds like, but I don't know if by mentioning specifics, if it puts me in a interesting position. So the rules surrounding pecuniary interest uh, would um, require a counselor to excuse themselves if they perceived um, a, a pecuniary interest, something about the conversation uh, that would create a direct benefit. It, it does not prevent a counselor from discussing uh, a motion that affects the general municipality uh, and indirectly affects them. Uh, the, the decision ultimately uh, to uh, excuse uh, themselves for a pecuniary in interest resides with the counselor. With that information, I, I'll, I'll leave it to you. Yeah, I suspect uh, my, from my understanding of the rules, I don't think you need to uh, step out for the vote, but uh, Councillor Gamana. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, um, and thank you for that motion. I was just wondering, you know, from the recommendation uh, uh, that we've got from the administration and the information that we heard, Councillor Bellas, um, in, in my opinion, I think we need to put that uh, the, the town, town administration will work with these groups to uh, create REP programs uh, that will allow the adult individuals to, um, you know, attend these programs. Uh, I believe that we should put that um, in the motion. Um, would you take a friendly amendment, uh, Councillor Bellis? Uh, thank you, Councillor Gamana. I, I don't believe that it 
needs to be in there because it's already in the guidelines from Alberta Health Services. Am I correct? Uh, so the guidelines uh, provide direction that either uh, the facility operator or the user group uh, could uh, elect to implement an REP program and continue with their sport activity. Um, if the if the interest of council is to provide clarity to administration uh, that they would like us to assist these groups in uh, creating the framework around which they can self-administer an REP, uh, it could be added to the motion. Uh, but I think it, it is understood uh, and the desire of administration uh, for us to continue to assist as many people as possible to access our facilities. And I think it, it's more important in how we communicate it to the public versus having it in the motion because the motion covers basically the implementation of the restriction program from Alberta Health Services. And we can communicate in to the public what the further information, right? So it sounds like the friendly amendment was not accepted. <laughs> could, could I just get either Bill or Sabina just to reread the um, motion, please? <laughs> okay. I move that council cancel the restriction exemption program at McKinsey Center and total fitness effective Wednesday, September 29, 2021, and that administration adjust facility operations to meet the current provincial health restrictions as implemented by Alberta Health Services. And move that council direct administration to operate the Omniplex and Park Valley Pool as per the current provincial health restrictions as implemented by Alberta Health Services. So for anyone listening that maybe doesn't quite uh, pick up on what the motion is, it's saying no to vaccine passports. If you want to boil it down. So, Councillor Dodds. I, but just to add on to that too, that there is the option as well for programs can continue. And for me that this was, wasn't about, um, you know, uh, a va so much a vaccine passport. This was about to make sure that our youth or our, our seniors could still access the programs that they could still be able to not only for the physical purpose, but for the social interaction. So in my opinion, this is a motion that fits that this is a motion that fits everybody that these programs can still continue and that our facilities still can maintain open for everybody to use. So this is a motion that I can support. I can get behind and I'm happy with. Councillor Peebles. Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you, Councillor Ballas, for a motion that keeps public buildings public. Um, one thing that I just want to say is uh, I feel bad for our administration in this process because the provincial government has been very unclear on how to implement these programs all the way through. There was a lack of information. There's a ton of disinformation. Uh, I know there was a number of different people that reached through different layers to try to find, and it was interpreted different ways by different layers. So there's... They need to get their own house in order. Uh, one concern for me is the province putting programs in place that can be divisive in a community. And uh, it's, it's very frustrating. And uh, I think we've kind of heard loud and clear from many different groups. Uh, many of the groups have their own rep program in place already. They already they're ready to roll it out themselves. But uh, I, I appreciate all of the emails and calls and everything we've heard because it's clear the public would like to have public access to the facilities. So. Thanks. Councillor Gamana. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, I approached this decision um, in two aspects. One, with the provincial guidelines that given to us, how can we uh, make sure that maximum number of uh, our community members can access these uh, facilities? The other piece is that the health and safety of our community and how can we make sure that, you know, when we operate these uh, facilities, uh, we are doing so that, um, you know, we will be a part of the solution. Um, so uh, in, in my mind, um, 
I think we a town has a role to play uh, trying to get these groups to organize uh, you know the, these REP programs so they can access uh, the uh, the adults and and the other groups can access the, the facilities itself um, and uh, I believe that um, that should be in the motion itself so that uh, it's very clear to the uh, administration that that is the uh, the way um, that um, the political arm of the uh, the town feels um, if you know if if you leave it aside then um, it's it's not clear direction for the administration in my mind that uh, you know this need to happen on, on top of that um, you know unfortunately uh, I, I've had a discussion with uh, uh, doctors a couple of doctors and healthcare professionals in our community unfortunately uh, the, the numbers in our community for the uh, COVID cases are going way up uh, our numbers are second uh, in in the whole province uh, and it's uh, you know, as as leaders of our community, I believe we need to show leadership in in that aspect as well. Um, so um, you know, I, I completely um, agree with the the uh, motion that uh, Councillor Bellas has put. But I think you know, for us, if we add that the other piece, um, I can wholeheartedly support that motion. Okay. Um, Councillor Bellas, you have well, you know, um, I, I agree with uh, Councillor Peoples on, on the weight that the province has put on the municipalities to try to make these decisions. I'm getting in my email boxes people that are asking, are we going to make it mandatory at the Oil Can Tavern or at the Independent or at the IGA? I think people need to realize that we don't control it. That's private business. It runs its own course. If they if they want to run um, their programs and they want to do that, that's theirs. We we only have the public facilities, so it's very interesting to see the information flow and what people are thinking and not thinking. And um, we've heard certainly from a very large group of people who are against this, but we've also heard from other people that are saying enact it for the safety. Goes to Councillor Gamana's piece. Um, I think we've come up with a uh, with a solution uh, that, and as people have said over and over again, pulling the community apart as opposed to pulling it together. I think we clearly have heard and clearly we're trying to do our very best to try to manage our public facilities and only would ask that people respect that. And lastly, thank you to the staff. I, I think it's absolutely the most difficult things. This is one of the most divisive issues that I faced in 18 years in, in the public office here in Drayton Valley. And so I think we found that ground and I thank you for that. Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you very much. Councillor Wheeler, you want to. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so for a lot of people, this has come down to passports or not. And for me, that's really the tip of the iceberg and the province has put that on us and it's not fair but for me this is a much bigger health issue and, and crisis that we need to work through and i think as a community we could come up with a lot of proactive solutions better ideas between fitness and mental health and eating right and stress and connection all those pieces are important and while we're deciding one tiny piece right now today I think we could be doing a lot more and I think we should be and I think we've heard from so many passionate people in our community that want to be helping and want to be doing better things for our community and when we had an economic crisis we created a task force to help figure it out so for me I'd like to see the same thing I'd like to see a group that's all about strengthening Drayton Valley in all different facets and that we have people from our health care providers to single moms to people who use our facilities, everyone should be included in figuring out multiple ways to make Drayton Valley stronger. COVID isn't going anywhere. And we need to figure out how we can move forward and make our community healthy. And I'd like to see the town start a, potentially start a, a committee that's looking into some of that. So. All right, thank you very much, Councillor Wheeler. So uh, I guess if we're just doing statement I guess everyone said their piece and so I'll just uh, add a quick blurb I've more or less stated my piece uh, last Wednesday um, you know certainly I do 
appreciate uh, administration looking into some of the options available and um, looks like uh, by the motion that's presented we will have the greatest number of uh, um, people availing of our facilities that choose to avail of our facilities so I'm happy to see that but um, you know unfortunately like I mentioned in the 300 and so pieces of correspondence that I've received very few of them actually touched on the public health emergency that is going on and I know Councillor Gamana touched on it a little bit um, we have one of the highest rates of COVID per capita in Alberta in our jurisdiction and we also have one of the lowest rates of vaccination and I mean I don't care if people get vaccinated or not um, but when you look at the statistics of the people that are in hospital and who are in the ICU um, it tends to be elderly people and it tends to be people that aren't vaccinated so um, I think in all of this we need to focus yeah I mean sports is important and uh, and particularly in youth um, but we also need to as uh, Councillor Wheeler mentioned the the health of our community and I mean probably 50 percent of the emails I received they talked about pulling together and pulling together to say no to vaccine passports but I think we kind of missed the point a little bit I think we need to pull together for the overall health of our community we have doctors and nurses and uh, pharmacists and people on the front lines that are getting burnt out. These are the people that are there to save our lives. And when they're the ones that are throwing up their hands saying, why do I even care anymore? Um, our community is going to be in serious trouble. Uh, and, and so I've had a number of people tell me, you know, be careful how you vote. It could have a long impact. Well, be careful what you wish for, because it could have a very long and serious impact on our community as well. So with that, uh, I mean, I'm in support of this motion but I think we just need to recognize um, the importance of still pulling together to ensure that our health care uh, facilities in our community and our province um, don't continue to uh, face the stress that they have been facing and we all have an individual responsibility to be better at uh, reducing the, the amount of COVID in our community and uh, you know when I go down to the hockey rink and I see people not wearing their masks uh, actively flaunting the fact that uh, they don't want to it's it disappoints me um, it's their choice but uh, um, until we all start pulling together uh, for the, the greater good of our community um, I don't see this going away anytime soon so I'm hoping that uh, my little public plea to our community we can all be a little bit better in helping reduce this so is there anything else? All right, so the motion we have is that council, council, the REP for Total Works and the MCC as of today, um, and not implement the uh, REP at the pool and Omniplex. And that the, that's the gist of it. I don't have the wording, so. Councilor McGee. I assume we're gonna record the vote. Um, if someone asks, we can record it. Um, if no one asks, then I would record it. Okay, so Councillor McGee has asked that the vote be recorded. So I just ask that when you vote, hold your hands up a little bit longer so administration can record that. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think to the uh, vote to be recorded, you have to ask it before the motion was made, if I'm not mistaken. It's before the vote. No, so, Mr. Arthur. I can provide the clarification. the The request for a recorded vote has to be made before the question is called. So the decision can't be made after the vote, uh, but it is any time before the vote is called, a request can be made. So the request to have it recorded, I will stand. No, it's, I didn't say, I didn't say all in favor. So I was just reiterating the motion, to make sure I had it clear. And then he asked for it to be recorded. So, all right. So um, without going over the motion, once again, if there's no further comments, questions or debates. I'll ask the question, all in favor, all opposed. That is carried and uh, I guess we have no other dealings on this. We can adjourn the meeting.
We'll adjourn it at 9.38 a.m. Um,